foreign subsidiary, consolidation of foreign subsidiary, foreign consolidation of foreign subsidiary. What do you mean by foreign subsidiary? A foreign subsidiary is a subsidiary that is situated in a country other than the country of the parent company. The subsidiary that is situa situated in a country other than the country of the parent company is said to be foreign subsidiary. In my lecture on IES 21, we examine some basic terms used in connection with foreign currency, which includes what? We have functional currency. Functional currency. The functional currency is a currency of the economic region in which the foreign entity is situated. The currency of the region in which an entity is situated is said to be a functional currency. A functional currency is a currency of the country in which an entity is situated. So, we also have presentation currency. Presentation currency. By presentation currency, we mean the currency in which the financial statement is presented. The currency in which the financial statement is presented is said to be the presentation currency. For example, if the financial statement is presented in Naira, the presentation currency, that is, in the statement of financial position, is presented in Naira. That means the presentation currency will be Naira. Then we also have exchange rates. Exchange rates is the rate of exchange between two countries. The rate of exchange between two countries is said to be an exchange rate. Then we frequently look at the spot rate. Spot rate. We mean the rate, the exchange rate at the time of the transaction. The exchange rate at the time of the transaction is said to be the spot rate. Then we also have closing rates. Closing rates. Closing rates is the exchange rate at the reporting date. The statement of financial position rate is said to be the closing rate. The rate of exchange at the end of the financial year is said to be the closing rate. Then the consolidation of foreign subsidiaries require three stages. Number one stage, stages. I tell you that the preparation of the consolidation test statement of financial position or consolidated financial statement of a foreign entity requires three stages. Number one stage is adjust, adjustment and updating stage. Updating stage. Updating stage. Meaning that the financial statement of the foreign entity will be adjusted up to date. Number two, we have translation stage. Translation stage. Meaning that the currency, the foreign currency, will be translated into the functional currency of the parent company. The foreign currency will be translated into the functional currency of the parent company. Then the third stage is consolidation stage. Consolidation stage. That is, at this stage, you consolidate.
the financial statement of the foreign, uh, I mean, because I read the financial statement of the group. So, those are the three stages involved. The number one stage is updating. The second one is translation stage, while the third one is consolidation stage. Then, In the preparation of the consolidated financial statement of the foreign entity, the first stage, the first step is to draw the blue structure. Draw the blue structure. That is the first step. You draw the blue structure. The second step. Then after drawing the blue structure, you update the financial statement. The financial statement. You update the financial statements of the foreign entity. You update the financial statement of the foreign entity. That is the second step. The third step. You calculate. Calculate. The seventh step 
is to calculate the consolidated retail values. The seventh step is to calculate the value of the non controlling interest. And the eighth step is to prepare the consolidated financial statements. So I want to talk about the translation here. My focus in this lecture is the preparation of consolidated statement of financial position. So, when you are preparing the consolidated and the translation stage, translation stage, when translating the financial statement of a foreign entity, one, you translate all assets, all assets and liabilities to be translated at the closing exchange rate. After that, at the exchange rate and the reporting date is said to be the closing exchange rate. The exchange rate at the Reporting date is said to be the closing exchange rate. All assets and liabilities should be translated at the closing exchange rate. Two. You translate. Translate. One. Share capital. The acquisition retail earnings, retail earnings, and the pay value adjustment occurring at the date of acquisition. You translate the share capital, the pre-acquisition retail earnings, the fair value adjustment that occur at the date of acquisition. You translate these items at the exchange rate, exchange rate at the date of acquisition. To be translated at the exchange rate at the date of acquisition. Three. Post acquisition retained earnings. Post acquisition retained earnings to make the balance bigger. Which will be either which will either be 
the SJ gains on translation of goodwill or SJ loss on translation of goodwill to be recognized in retained earnings. So when we get to consolidated statement of profit or loss, and we discuss how the item of profit or loss and the other value should be translated. But for the purpose of the statement of financial position, I told you that we have three stages of consolidation. The first stage is updated stage. We have the financial statement of the foreign entity should be updated, should be brought up to date. And the second stage, after updating, is translation. And after translation, we have the consolidation of the financial statements. And I'll be quite applying the steps for preparing the consolidated deficit statement of financial position. The first thing is to draw the group structure. The second one is to update the financial statement of the foreign entity. And the third step is after updating to translate to the presentation currency, that is the functional currency of the parent entity. After that, we calculate the goodwill in foreign currency. After calculating the goodwill in foreign currency, then you have calculate the exchange difference of that goodwill. After calculating the exchange difference of goodwill, you can go ahead and calculate the consolidated retainers. The amount of property that will appear in the consolidated statement of financial position. Then you calculate the value of non controlling interest. And then you prepare the consolidated financial statements. So I feel that to translate the assets and assets to use the closing exchange rate. That is the exchange rate as the reporting date. Then to calculate, to translate the share capital the acquisition and other items that occur at the date of acquisition, you use the exchange rate at the date of acquisition. That is to translate your share capital, your pre acquisition retaining and fair value adjustment occurring at the date of acquisition, those items should be translated at the exchange rate at the date of acquisition. Then, the post acquisition retainer is the balance figure after the statement of financial acquisition has been translated. The balance figure will represent the post acquisition retained earnings. So, those are the procedures for preparing the consolidated financial statement of the foreign entity. So, we are going to take our person as a work example. So, I will use Question from corporate reporting, finance, uh, uh, corporate reporting, question number one, 2007. I can, I can, question number one, corporate question, 